Hi friends, this is Mainak Misra and welcome back to my channel. Today I will discuss with you one of the most heart-touching films, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed. Nan Golden is not an unknown name in the world of photography. She has been a major photography and artist for over four decades. Her works are exhibited frequently in renowned galleries all over the world. However, her life has never been smooth. <clears throat> she sailed through multiple tumultuous time periods and numerous rough tides throughout her life. She had to take up multiple odd jobs to survive. She even worked as a go-go dancer and a sex worker. However, she does not know how to stop. Despite innumerable obstacles, she did not get crushed. Her indomitable spirit has triumphed over all the odds. <clears throat> her story, her saga still goes on. She had the guts and courage to take on the powerful billionaire Sackler family. Her organization Payne protested strongly against the Sacklers on behalf of more than half a million Americans, unfortunate Americans who lost their lives due to the opioid crisis. <clears throat> this film is based on her life. Filmmaker Laura Poitras has shown her life struggle, photography works and protest against the settlers in the film. Nan Golden's life has never been smooth. She has gone through multiple tumultuous periods in her life. When she was merely 11 years old, her elder sister Barbara committed suicide lying down on the railway track. She was sent to foster home named Jewish Adoption Agency in Bacon Hill. However, she was ousted from all the schools and foster homes. Ultimately, Satya Community School saved her life. <clears throat> there, she met and befriended another would-be famous photographer, David Armstrong, who became her inspiration and vision to live. They liberated each other. David was openly gay and he named her Nan. <coughs> They both started visiting the other side bar. Nan got a Polaroid camera, which became her vision, her only way to live. And at that point of time, she started taking pictures as if it was the only language she spoke at that point of time. 
then in 1975 they started going to province town which has been referred to as gay paradise for decades nan started working at a hot dog stand and then she got a job in the famous lesbian bar the pied piper <clears throat> she mingled with john waters cookie muller sharon nisp and divine she felt that it was the time of liberation it was the time of possibilities it was the time of independence and then in 1978 she moved to baveri lower manhattan In 1979, she met curator and writer Marvin Heiferman. In Bavari, she lived with Greer Langton, Suzanne Fletcher, and Cookie Muller was the center of activities of New York downtown. They both worked as go-go dancers. New York was topless, but New Jersey was not. So Nan danced in New Jersey. And that was the time of her struggle. She worked even a sex worker. Liberty's Booty, directed by Vivian Dick, is based on her life. In the film, she played the madam of the house where she worked as a sex worker. And Liberty's Booty was based on her life. And she worked as go-go dancer and a sex worker to buy her photography films. <clears throat> and then after that tough phase of her life, she got a job in Tin Pan Alley. The owner of Tin Pan Alley, Maggie Smith, employed ex-sex workers and showed them a ray of hope. A customer would be allowed until and un until the time a staff like Nan wanted him to go. It would be run by all female staff without any male bouncers. At that point of time, many male artists, photographers and gallerists thought that nobody should photograph one's own life. But Nan thought The art world was bullshit and the real world was Times Square. Brian was Nan's partner from 1981 to 1984. He went to Berlin where she had been for a slideshow. He became jealous and punched on her face repeatedly 
when he came to know that Nan had been with a girl, Sylvie from Paris. He targeted her left eye and wanted to make her blind. Blood came out of her left eye. Sylvie saved her life. All the bones in the orbital floor of the eye were broken. Brian burned down her diaries. However, her slideshow was saved because She kept that in the loft where she had shown it earlier. That was the level of her struggle. Brian and her father wanted to stop the publication of her book, The Ballad of Sexual Dependency. Her father thought that she was accusing him of Barbara's suicide. Brian's attack created such an intense impact in her mind that she was terrified of all those males when she got back to Tin Pan. The struggle between autonomy and dependency is the core of the ballad of sexual dependency. Nan always felt that her parents were not equipped to be parents. <clears throat> they had children as they were expected, more than it was about nurturing other human beings. Barbara's struggle, Barbara's rebellion was the starting point of Nan's own. She showed her the way. She was sent to an orphanage and there she burned down the curtain and escaped. Had she got little love, care and and home, she would have been survived. The psychiatrist at the hospital mentioned that Mrs. Golden was sick and not Miss Golden. And that was such a, a heartbreaking moment for Nan to know all these. Barbara's struggle became Nan's own struggle. But she never stopped. She does not know how to stop. Filmmaker Laura Poitras has woven Nan's life and her protest against the Sacklers onto parallel tracks. And in between, she infused archival footage of her life and her slideshows like The Ballad of Sexual Dependency, Memory Lost, The Other Side, Sister Saints and Sibyls. Nan had undergone wrist surgery in Berlin in 2014. Initially, she was prescribed only three OxyContin pills per day. But soon she got addicted to OxyContin and started swallowing as many as 18 pills per day. Initially, only 40 milligram 
oxycontin was strong enough so just imagine she totally got addicted to oxycontin the addiction of that pill in 2017 she came to know about the sacklers and that's when she established pain prescription addiction intervention now full name of pain the members of pain including nan went to the temple of dendur in the sacklers wing in the metropolitan museum of art the met at 4 pm on 10th march 2018 and there they threw away the prescriptions they threw away the the bottles the oxycontin bottles in the water tank beside the temple of dendur their slogans were sacklers lie people die temple of greed temple of money temple of death sacklers knew that their pills would kill these were their slogans in 1996 richard sackler confirmed to his assistant on one email that there would be a blizzard of oxycontin prescriptions and the members of pain took worthwhile revenge when they went to guggenheim threw away the prescriptions from above and then walked down to met it was indeed a blizzard of oxycontin prescription rejections nan threatened to withdraw her slideshow at the national portrait museum in london which was about to take 1.3 million dollar grant from the settlers ultimately it did not take it dropped the grant and many other museums across the world stopped taking grants from the settlers even a hedge fund quite unprecedented they also stopped taking the grant from the settlers louver was the first museum to remove settlers name and many other educational institutions and galleries museums followed them Purdue Pharma ultimately filed for bankruptcy to avoid more than 3,000 lawsuits. They agreed to pay $6 billion to settle all the lawsuits. However, the scar that they created, the Sacklers family created, cannot be forgotten. They are responsible for the death of over half a million unfortunate americans who lost their lives due to the opioid crisis the opioid epidemic anybody can pursue business unless it affects others medicine should be manufactured for the sake of people for humans if the only objective of manufacturing medicine is profit then it will surely bring cars to the mankind. Sacklers knew the addiction of Oxycontin and Valium. Still, they kept manufacturing those drugs. And because of them, over 0.5 million unfortunate Americans lost their lives and they created indelible scars in the lives of 
the family members of the victims. Those were pathetic moments. A little bit of their suffering came out during the virtual hearing of the bankruptcy of Pardew Farmer. However, the enormous suffering will always remain in their hearts forever. And the names of the Sackler family can never be erased. They will always be blamed for that. And Nan showed her courage. She had the guts to protest against such a powerful billionaire family and all the members of pain had the guts and courage to come forward on behalf of more than 0.5 million americans unfortunate americans that's why this film is one of the most important films you will ever see it has a very deep significance not only in US but all over the world I hope you, you will see this film you have seen this film and if you have not please see this film and the request goes again please support my channel subscribe to my channel so that you do not miss regular updates thank you so much for watching this video thank you and bye